My name is Remy LeBeau. To my enemies, it's Gambit. You can go on ahead and forget the first name for now. Every man has a price to charge and a price to pay. I've paid mine in spades. If I've learned anything in my life, it's this. Always play the cards you deal. My name is Gambit. And I play for keeps. Fans have been after seeing Gambit in these movies. I remember the first movie, fans and kids would come to me and say, is Gambit in the movie? Is he gonna have Gambit? Is he gonna throw the cards? It's like, all right, hang on. You only do so many in each movie. Hang on, hang on. Gambit is a character the fans have been dying to see. And he probably is one of the most famous and popular of the comic book series. So I'm so thrilled we hadn't used him. We didn't want to put him in the first three. We wanted to make sure that every mutant that we brought in was different from the ones that we already had there. Are you Remy LeBeau? Do I owe you money? No. Then Remy LeBeau I am. He has this amazing ability to impart certain kinetic energy into any object that he touches. And again, of course, me being the sort of uh, drama-driven director that I am, I'm kind of thinking, well, of course, that is another way for one's inner rage in a fantasy way to come out. <laughs> Taylor Kitsch does a terrific job. He brings kind of a suave New Orleans, kind of the cat that swallowed the canary look. Just a bit of attitude to play back against Logan, which is kind of fun. Gambit's a loner. He's been through some stuff when he was younger. An orphan and a thief, petty thief. So he's kind of just been on his own since the get-go. And you can kind of tell with his, just the way he intrinsically deals with everything. I don't think he's ever in a hurry because he has that energy. I'm playing him at, at a younger age too, so he's got that, not cockiness, but he can be quite abrasive. He knows that he has that energy and at will he can toss you through maybe a wall if he wants. So much fun to play. He's got that persona with him that he really doesn't show until he needs to. That's cool. We had to teach him how to throw cards, which he was terrific in game about using. Playing with cards, I gotta tell you, I shot the card stuff first, and now I can do quite a bit with the cards. Sitting in that hotel room for a good four to six hours a day, it's good times. Kinda go crazy, not gonna lie. Literally, like, packs and packs of cards dispersed throughout my room. That was on for weeks and weeks, but... It, it's definitely worth it, you know? That gives you the confidence to have them in your hand and just play with them unconsciously, rather than like, oh, how's the card look? We've heavily prevised all of Gambit's card tricks as far as what he was gonna do with the cards, how they were gonna hang in the air, just the look of the, of the energy went through a lot of versions of it. This was a real problem. This took us a long time to figure out how to do it. How do you show that? I mean, we had all kinds of purple lines running all over the cards, jumping from one charge to the other. We finally went for less is more. We finally went for that purple energy just surrounding the suit on the card, Ace of Diamonds. Gambit had a lot of bow staff work. And we did a lot of research into Japanese-style bow staff, Chinese style bow staff, Korean style bow staff, and we settled on a kind of Chinese wushu esque meets karate do bow staff version for Gambit. That's a nice stick. He really worked very hard, worked with the stuntmen, he took the time to prepare and to physically undertake that character. The training started right when I got here, the bow staff and all that, and I'm that kind of actor where you want as much of the stunt stuff to be you. And so, you know, you gotta kind of deserve it, earn it, you know, in a sense. And they're not gonna shoot it if you're like throwing sticks and the bow staff's flying out of your hand while you do it. So it's up to you if you, you want the double doing all your stuff or you want to come in and work your own and get that many cooler shots out of it. The physicality part of it helps a lot. You get his strat, you get his mindset. It's funny because they send these videos or whatnot of what's gonna happen in these fights. The video comes in and it's like, okay, we gotta do this, we gotta train for this, you're gonna be on wires and all that kind of stuff. So we start training for that, then a new video will come in and it's like, okay, this is out, but this is in, so let's kind of, you know, shift our training other way. So you're adapting, but at the same time, your tools are just, you know, more and more. We 
have a reveal with Gambit running across the rooftops and flying with the staff. I have to say that Taylor was phenomenal on his wire work and uh, really trained really hard to be able to do that because we wanted to be able to film him front on. So we had his his face coming at us. You could do face replacement if it was if it was um, impossible for the actor to do that stunt. But that twirling moment on the wires is Taylor Kitsch doing a great job. We decided that instead of shooting this in Louisiana and New Orleans, it would probably be a better idea to do this on a green screen stage and then drop in New Orleans behind it. The first step is obviously shoot it. And then we go in and we start blocking it out with rough 3D geometry. This is the rough 3D layout of our New Orleans scene. Now, the great thing about doing anything like this virtually is that you can move things around and shift it about. One of the big remits that we had was that we need to see the church in there, we need to see the church in there. A lot of these things were built from actual still photos that we had of Louisiana. So after this, the, we get sign off from everyone and then we actually go into lighting and rendering. And this is the final results. It was done by a company in Toronto called Seho VFX. Uh, little touches that we've added in there, for example, the colored lights on the casino boat on the Mississippi, tiny little star filters on the lights everywhere, uh, the bridge in the background, everything falling into place really nicely. We built a huge set in Sydney, one of these enormous sound stages of the, the alleyway that he breaks up the fight between Logan and his half-brother Creed with his bringing his staff down onto the cobblestone street and sort of ripples the entire street and blows the windows out and so forth that sort of shows his power. That sequence for me was one of the most demanding because we had a lot of elements there. We had a lot of elements of wire work. We had a lot of elements of explosions. We had a lot of elements of camera work, i.e. cable cam, steady cam, dolly, techno crane. It was covered from anywhere you could think of covering it. It looked like a puppet show. But then the entire scene, and especially those big wide shots, are further enhanced in, in the computer by adding more debris, although there was a fair amount of it, more debris, and of course the big shockwave that lifts all the tiles in the alley. What we did first was we shot all the actors on wires. You can see he does his thing and they get pulled the way and uh, you can see we have mats and so forth for the, for the guys to land on. The explosion, it was time to sort of ripple down the street. You can see everything sort of going down the street. But of course there's nobody there, so what we did is we took our actors and composited them into the debris. But they also wanted the cobblestones of the street to deflect and, and buckle and warp with the energy of Gambit's staff. And Gambit is imparting energy through his staff. So when he hits it on the ground, the energy travels down to the staff and then damages the whole street. So this is the, the finished shot. And you see this is the, so you can see all the little animation, the, the, the glowing cobblestones. And all this color that you see in between the stones is, is animation. We put in the color, his, his sort of energy is sort of radiating out. And you can see the two, uh, you can see Creed and Logan getting sort of thrown back in all the debris and somehow magically Gambit is unaffected by it. And again, well, the first time we did some of the animation effects, they were, we started big, and they were, everyone, oh, this is way over the top, his color's too much, he had lightning going everywhere, and what we did is just dialed down the effect until it felt right. You're doing it, and obviously none of the special effects are in it, so you're just like, okay, was that, how was that? The staff was purple there, did you see it? No. You know, those kind of things. Even throwing the cards and stuff, you know, you just gotta, it's your gig, you gotta buy into it and then some. You miss me?